The media has just reported that Samsung SDI, one of Tesla's battery suppliers, continues to expand its battery business this year. Is that even true? No, it's actually factually incorrect. In fact, since 2020, Samsung SDI's global battery market share has decreased by 50%. It hopes that its new battery technology can reverse its fall in the battery market, which has been precipitous, which no one has really talked about, and which has been quite a surprise. Can Samsung's impressive new technology help save its battery business? When I say save, I mean, I mean that in a very real way, because they do need saving. Hello, my friends. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. You don't hear a lot about Samsung STI and their batteries these days because they're losing market share because it's much more interesting technology, cheaper and probably better coming from other car companies. So Samsung have been working hard to develop some new tech and they say that they have actually done something very impressive now. The South Korean manufacturer mentioned solid state batteries and 46XX type cylindrical battery cells, meaning 4680 cells, I'm going to guess, as the future growth engine. So clearly Samsung are planning on making 4680 cells for Tesla, but it wouldn't just be for Tesla because now General Motors, BMW, in fact, I think there's about four different car companies, automakers that have now decided, yes, yes, Big cylindrical cells are a good idea. We want them too. We're going to make them with our joint venture partners or we'll order them from suppliers. We know that Samsung SDI has been working hard on large cylindrical battery cells now for quite a while. In fact, they began doing this, I believe, in early 2022 or late 2021. The company said line set up in regard to SSB, in other words, solid state batteries and 4680 batteries. So we know that preparations are underway. Inside EV said, let's recall that the current lineup of Samsung SDI batteries includes various types of cylindrical cells, including 1865 cells. Obviously they are still used in many applications such as electric scooters, bicycles, etc. 2170 cells, Tesla still use those in their electric cars as well as pouch and prismatic cells. The use of 46 appears to mean they're referencing 4680 cells that they would be making predominantly for Tesla, but also some of the other automakers I mentioned as well. Now, more recently, BMW has actually announced that it plans on using 4695 and 46120 cells. So it could also be manufacturing those cells for BMW, I personally think it'd be a very strange decision for BMW to try and make their own proprietary cells when other automakers appear to be happy to use 4680 cells. You would need new production lines. The batteries would be much more expensive as a result. It would be a very niche product and therefore BMW would be paying a lot more for them. I don't know of any company in the world other than Samsung making these 4695 and 46120 cells. So very strange to hear that BMW plan on using those sizes. Maybe there's some sort of strategic advantage that no one else knows about other than BMW and their extra special EV engineers. One of the most interesting things is that according to the company, their 46XX batteries achieved target performance earlier than planned and Samsung SDI started preparation of samples for customer. Who would they be working feverishly to get at a customer and to sell 4680s to? Obviously, there's only one, Tesla. I mean, have a look at EV's sales so far this year. There's only two car companies in the world that are really seriously growing EV sales. It's Tesla and BYD. Just looking at the numbers here, we've got them now for the first six months of the year. Volkswagen sales up a little bit. Um, you know, Sake, they were one of the biggest. Their sales are actually down in EVs. Hyundai, Kia, only up about 15%. So clearly, if you're going to go after anyone, you go after the big fish. Clearly, what this means is, Samsung say, hey guys, we have 4680 cells. They have the energy density that Tesla want. We're ready to go. And that means that Tesla may be able to ramp production of the Cybertruck and other EVs that need the 4680 cells faster than what analysts are saying. Possible that they'll get a bunch of supply from Samsung. We don't know how many batteries Samsung are in position to manufacture at this point in time. I'm guessing we'll find out that soon. If the samples are going to be sent to customers, it could take up to 12 months to actually hit serious production though. So 
you're probably looking at about mid next year before Tesla actually starts using these 4680 cells in their vehicles. What I'm most curious to know is though, are they better than Tesla's own 4680s? What's the energy density? Will they beat Panasonic to market? It's a bit of a race here. It's not just, it's not just Panasonic trying to make 4680s for Tesla or Tesla trying to make their own better 4680s It's Samsung. And in fact, I've heard there's actually even other companies doing this as well. Now, apparently Samsung will make the 46120 cells for BMW at their factory in Hungary. Those cells have a width of 46 millimeters and a height of 120 millimeters. Now, keep in mind, it makes sense that these are for BMW because BMW and Samsung have had a long running partnership. Samsung are one of BMW's main battery suppliers. And BMW have grown their EV sales this year. Now, they're still very small numbers, but they've nearly doubled their EV sales this year. So that's a really good result from BMW. On a side note, in addition to that, General Motors have signed up with Samsung to get 4680 type battery cells. I'm assuming that means 4680s. That would be the cheapest and probably the best thing as Samsung would have put the most effort into that because it's going to pay them the most money. But we don't know yet if General Motors will officially use Tesla's 4680 cells. Now we know they'll use their NAX charging ports. So hey, why not just use the cells as well? It would make sense. How much is the production numbers we're looking at so far? Apparently the report says that the production will be around 10 gigawatt hours. That's not a huge number, but I'm going to guess that Samsung will be planning on increasing that number as quickly as possible. Why would they be wanting to do that? Because, well, the company needs to badly. In 2020, Samsung had more than 6% global market share of EV battery manufacturing. This year, that figure has dropped to just under 4%. So you can see how important Tesla is, not just Tesla, BMW as well, and of course other companies, but predominantly Tesla is for Samsung preventing their battery business from basically dying. When I say dying, this could happen very, very quickly. I mean, have a look at what's happened to LG Chem. Now, yeah, they're still one of the biggest battery manufacturers in the world, but if you have a look at their market share, it had a precipitous fall recently. For example, in 2020, LG Chem had 23% of the global battery market. This year, 13%. Now, they haven't exactly halved their market share, but it's not far off halving. It can happen very quickly. Market share changes very, very fast in the battery industry. And I don't really see LG Chem producing anything revolutionary. Yes, they do plan on apparently making 4680 cells for Tesla as well. So now you've got those three companies, LG Energy Solutions, and of course, Panasonic and Tesla all racing to make the best 4680 cells. That's a good thing, but it will be a tough area to crack because Tesla's going to be saying, well, are they better than ours? Do we want to buy them from you? Well, yeah, maybe. I don't know if they want to do it long term, though. Either way, clearly Samsung is taking 4680 cell production seriously. They need to. They need to get some market share here. They need to maintain their position and not lose any more market share. Can they do that with these new 4680 cells? Sounds like they possibly could. Sounds like they already have the energy density that Tesla wants. That's probably around 300 watts per kilo. That would potentially give them the advantage that they need to maintain in order to continue to be able to, you know, take away market share from the new M3P batteries, lithium ion phosphate batteries doped with manganese. You have to have significantly more energy density than those batteries in order to actually be able to have a reason for these cells to even exist. Otherwise, just go with the longer lasting, cheaper M3P battery. Clearly, they must have higher energy density than 300 or at least than around 290 watts per kilo. What are your thoughts, guys? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.